Good morning, everybody, uh, or good morning for people on the West Coast. So I'm going to tell you quickly about um, Pinpoint, uh, which is your third trajectory planner option. Um, we are just presenting three different options for trajectory planning that you can use. Um, NTE is in MATLAB, um, Herbs is uh, what you just saw, and then Pinpoint uh, is the one that I've built. Um, I think one reason that I really like uh, what I built with Pinpoint is that it is sort of web first. Um, it works as a desktop application. It works in your web browser. So here I've loaded up the website um, and I'll just flash the links for a second. So virtualbrainlab.org is where we have documentation and tutorials. Um, this link here goes to uh, the actual web app. Um, and then we have a Pinpoint. You can read more about Pinpoint in if you want to. Um, but right now, let me just introduce the whole thing to you quickly. Um, so in a few minutes, uh, I'm just going to show you how you would go about planning a trajectory. So this is the mouse brain right now. We also have the rat brain coming in the next week or so. Um, I'm using my left uh, mouse button to click and drag the brain around. Um, right click pans the camera, and you can zoom in and out on the 3D space. Um, and pinpoint is sort of 3D first. Um, we don't have great support for 2D slices. So if you really need that, then um, you might look at herbs as, a, as an alternative for that. Um, you can drop different probes. Right now, we have uh, a small selection of probes. We're hoping to add more. Um, let's plan with a four-shank neuropixels probe. Um, so I just dropped the probe in the scene. You can see the 3D model, the scale relative to the mouse brain. Um, and seeing that 3D space, I think, is really helpful for people who are unfamiliar with these, these probes. OK, so if you were planning um, some kind of insertion, you might want to pick a few areas. Um, we'll do kind of a similar insertion to uh, what uh, Andy showed in his video. Um, so here I'm going to turn on the VTA and um, visual cortex and uh, just show you that those popped up in, in 3D space here. Um, and then what we can do, if I can get the zoom bar out of the way, um, there's a little snap button here, which snaps the probe tip um, into the region of interest. So this is my generally recommended way to plan an insertion. Um, pop the area of interest into the scene so that you can see it. Snap the probe tip to that region. And then there are um, keyboard controls that let you refine the trajectory from there. Um, so you'll find pictures of those uh, on the website. So I'll jump back over there. Um, in the tutorial section, um, there's a tutorial for probe controls. And if you go there, um, we have this picture of how the different keyboard keys um, map onto rotations of the probe. And you can also find that uh, in Pinpoint by hitting Escape. Um, and you can see it all here. And we have videos that explain how this stuff works. Um, so right now, I'm going to use the F key to change the angle of the probe. Um, I'm going to use the uh, one key to rotate the probe. Um, and I'm just trying to set up a trajectory here. Um, we support both um, keyboard clicks. Um, we also support controllers. So if you have uh, like a PlayStation controller, you can use that to move probes. Um, and we also support clicking on the probe. So right now I'm holding the left mouse button down. Um, I'm picking an axis key. So here I hit W for the AP axis, and I'm just dragging the probe um, through space to move it. Um, one nice thing about uh, Pinpoint is we designed the software with the intention of building um, multi-probe insertions. So we can easily click to add in a second probe and drop that in the scene. Um, and then we can rotate this probe to create a second insertion um, wherever we might want to go. Um, and for people who are planning multi-probe insertions, you uh, are often worried about probes colliding with each other. Um, so we do have automatic collision detection in this 3D scene. If your probes are going to hit each other, um, we pop up a warning. And that's a setting that you can turn on and off if you don't uh, want to see it popping up all the time. Um, to switch back and forth between probes, you just click back and forth. OK, so that's the basic setup for, for planning a multi-probe insertion. Um, I'm going to move on and, and show you a few more um, small details and remind you, of course, that we have uh, tons of tutorials and videos that you can watch to, to get all these details um, uh, later on. So one thing that we have here uh, that I find really helpful um, is in the settings, uh, we have rig parts. Um, helps you to get a sense of scale for what you're looking at and just understand the geometry of the mouse brain. Um, so here I'm going to turn on two things, uh, the skull uh, rig. So this is just a mouse skull aligned with um, uh, the atlas that I showed you under the hood. 
Um, and the implant well here is just a 3D model that we put on most of our uh, most of our mice. Um, if you're planning some particularly difficult recording, um, you might be worried about hitting your rig geometry. Um, so we can help you detect those uh, those those collisions as well. Um, we also have a feature in the settings here. Um, I'm going quickly because you can find all this in the tutorials as well, but under probes, um, there's a craniotomy tool you can turn on. Um, and that lets you move a craniotomy along the AP and the ML axes and change its size. Um, so you can, you can plan how big of a craniotomy you're going to need um, to actually fit, say, two probes in uh, one single craniotomy without having to worry about them crashing into each other. OK, so that's the, the five minute version of how to plan an insertion uh, in, in Pinpoint. Um, and I'm going to jump back to the slides now and walk through um, a little more detail about what's coming up for Pinpoint in, in the next few uh, weeks. Uh, so this is what I just showed you, this 3D scene. Um, Pinpoint is not just available as a web app. Uh, you can also download it as um, a Windows application. Um, and I'll show you how that works in just a moment. Um, we theoretically have a version that runs on Linux, but we need somebody to help us test it. Um, we have documentation tutorials. Um, and of course, we have this paper that you can look at as well. Um, and I think I'm going to run over the allotted 30 minutes. Uh, but if it's OK, I'll take my, uh, I'll, I'll go a little less than 10 minutes for my section. Um, so the other thing that we have built into uh, Pinpoint now is the same thing that you saw for NTE earlier. You can link Pinpoint um, to data acquisition software. We basically pass forward uh, an API that tells the, the data acquisition software what um, uh, where the probe is in 3D space. Um, so I'm going to show you that really quickly. I have here the OpenEFIS GUI open. Um, this is a four shank probe um, that's set up in the scene. And I've attached this probe viewer object here. Um, and I have Pinpoint running locally on my computer. This is the Windows build. Um, and I have an insertion that's running through Hippocampus and down into um, Thalamus. Uh, and again, you can go in the settings. You can go to API. You turn on this open EFIS API thing. You select which probe the Pinpoint probe is connected to in open EFIS, um, And it propagates that information over there. You know, if you move um, the probe in Pinpoint, you're seeing the anatomical information here update in the open EFIS GUI as well. So just letting you know that that system works uh, in both systems. It's a feature that we've been working on together for a while now. Um, one thing that, uh, the last thing that Andy mentioned about NTE, we also have. So Pinpoint can be, uh, can echo the position of probes on your SenseFX and new scale manipulators. I'm not going to tell you about it. You need to go and watch our videos about it. Um, but uh, go to our website um, and go to the EFIS link documentation, and you can find more info about that. And I'm happy to help people on Slack or over Zoom to get that set up. Um, and the last thing we're building is we are working on getting uh, Pinpoint talking to the hardware micro manipulators. We call this Copilot. Um, and the idea is to automate your insertion process entirely. Um, and we think that that would be particularly helpful when SenseiFX releases their new rig, where you can put um, 12 or more uh, probes all on top of the brain at the same time. So something that's coming soon. Um, in the next week or so, uh, we have the Waxholm Rad Atlas that will be released in Pinpoint. So you can look forward to that. Um, and we have a bunch of other features that are coming. Um, we really need help with these atlases. Uh, if you're asking in the chat, I haven't looked at it in a few minutes, but if you're asking about macaque, um, about human, about ferret, about bird, um, developmental mouse CCF, uh, we, could, we could use your help. So please email me. Um, and uh, let's get those atlases in Pinpoint. Um, but I, I, need, I do need help from people who know more about those atlases to figure out what's the right atlas and to sort of package it properly. Um, cool, lots more stuff coming. Um, there's a Python API that allows you to control the Pinpoint scene separately, um, fiber photometry coming soon, um, saving loading of experiments, et cetera.